I am going away from like uh, Greg's method of training, training to failure, training to failure, training to failure, going going harder than last time all the time. And it felt so good that even while I was in the gym training my legs, I was looking forward to coming back and I was looking forward to the next day training back. <laughs> It feels really silly and it feels so meathead to kind of say that. I have uh, Everyone that I start off, when I start you guys off, I start you guys off lower than what you are capable of. Like, and I start you off deloaded because I want you to, the goal is to keep making infinite progress, right? That's the point. If you can keep making infinite Today's update, um, I think this update might be coming earlier than the actual other update simply because I haven't been able to finish editing that video. But I think this one does not require that much editing, so this one's going to be easy for me to put up. Um, basically, in short, this is week 10's update, and I will be putting up week 8.5, week 9's update with the pictures and everything up for you uh, in a little bit. There's no pictures in this one. Uh, I'm just going to give you like some of my thoughts and what uh, what is going on per se at this point. Um, everything is amazing. I love my training. I love the eating, the food, and everything, and I'm feeling really good. Um, I, I don't know if it's in my head or something, but I like my veins are popping really well. Like, I don't know if definitions are really improved or I don't know what's going on at this point. Um, I finished the mini, a uh, mini cart last week. And um, I think I dropped like about two kilos or something. Uh, some folks asked me to give you details on how a mini cut works. And I'm going to give that to you next time. Uh, like I'll make a separate video about a mini cut and how mini cuts work. But yeah, I just wanted to give you like an update on what I felt and how things are going with respect to the mini cut and everything else. Finish the mini cut, maybe two kilos of loss. Uh, feeling of leanness, even though there's pictures and everyone really, really enjoyed those pictures. I myself can't see the difference really well between the left and right. I can see a little bit more definition in my abs um, and I can see better uh, quad sweep and better calves and such. Like I can see more size, but I can see really good leanness in those pictures themselves. That said, in terms of feeling, everything started feeling tighter. Like my pecs, my arms, my quads, my hamstrings, my glutes, uh, and, and most importantly, most specifically, like my abs. I definitely, like my top couple of abs and everything just started becoming way more leaner and bigger and blockier, I guess, which just means more fat loss up here. Um, even my obliques and my side shot, the one that I do, um, that one also became much, much better, I guess. So, so there definitely was fat loss that I could see in person in real, like after a shower or just looking myself in the, in the mirror or something, but I couldn't see those in those pictures that I, uh, basically took at that point. So yeah, the mini cut worked feelings of leanness and feeling good and everything today. I checked my last weight of, and, uh, this is going to be, this was 81.7 or something. Or, yeah, 81.7 kilos or something. So I'm still on the low end at this point. And uh, I have been trying to get my calories up. My calories up are now between 2,500 to 3,000. And I try and hit 3,000 for the most part every single day. I, I'm hitting about 2,800, 2,900, sometimes three grand. Maybe if I overeat someday or I eat some junk uh, someday, then it goes up to 3,500. But yeah, weight is not going up or it's not moving up beyond 82.5, 82.3. And today, like I said, I clocked in at 81.7. So this is the last day that I'm clocking in without MK677. I'm going to add in MK677 at 25 milligrams um, starting tonight. And I expect to see an easy two kilos of gain in like two days because like mk677 gives you water bloat gut bloat and it adds up like a lot of water really quick and i'm also hoping to really also see really good fullness and thickness in my like basically in my in my biceps like there's i mean not my biceps in my in my uh entire body like all my muscles because that's what mk677 does as well so i had planned to get add in mk677 really quick like let's say two weeks or four weeks in but it's now 10 weeks in and i only have like 10 weeks left um so it's a little bit late but this should be fun and we'll see how we go from here but again like i said i I expect to see like two kilos of water weight adding up in like the next two days or so uh, which i will update you about next week and no, the the next pictures and shots that i get next week okay in terms of uh, training what i have changed so the deload the deload was really really useful i now when you take a deload i actually have a couple of my clients right now uh, you numbskull <laughs> there are some people uh, that have uh, Everyone that I start off, when I start you guys off, I start you guys off lower than what you are capable of. Like, 
and I start you off deloaded because I want you to, the goal is to keep making infinite progress, right? That's the point. If you can keep making infinite progress for like one year, two years, three years straight, then that's what is really more important. It, it doesn't matter how slow you go. It, it, that's what's really important as opposed to making huge jumps of progress in the first three or four weeks and then plateauing and then having to deload anyways. So I start everyone off deloaded, which is exactly what I did myself as well. I deloaded because I was really overly stressed at this point in time. And the deload made, when I was doing the deload, it did make me feel comfortable and like more relaxed for the first day or two days. So I took two days off and I then I went in for the whole push, arms, pull, uh, chest, legs, everything. And um, and I just reduced, I went nowhere close to failure. I changed up the exercises. I had like two, three, four reps in, ta in the tank. Uh, it kind of almost felt like I was wasting my time. I felt like, what am I doing here? That's how a deload should actually feel. It, it should feel like, do I even lift pro? Like, what am I doing here? Why am I here in the gym at this point? Um, that's what a deload should feel like, but that is basically what active recovery means, which is you're pushing blood into the muscles. You're still using the muscles. You're still giving it volume. You're pushing blood into the muscles, but you, you're you pushing in blood not to create more growth. You're pushing in blood so that it removes the lactic acid and base that's been built off for so long. So that's what active recovery is. Um, so yeah, the deload seemed to feel really good. And uh, doing that deload, whoops, doing that deload actually made me remember that um, I should not be going to failure all the time, whether enhanced or not, because it just, going to failure the entire time is not bad for the muscles, it's really bad for your central nervous system. Like you really, really feel fatigued and really feel stressed. And as I mentioned this before uh, in a bunch of other videos, like I literally have no time in my entire life. I wake up uh, at 7, 7.30 a.m. Uh, work in my own, I do my own work, like all this YouTube editing video stamp, blah, 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 Instagram, everything. Work that till like 10 a.m., 10 a.m. to 6.30 I'm working my other nine to five required job that I'm doing. And then as soon as 6.30 hits, I, I'm out uh, I'm out of the door, I'm head, headed off to the gym. I never make it back before 10 to 10.30. So I come back at 10.30 p.m. at night, then you cook food, then you eat and you go to sleep, right? There's no time to do anything in life. So if my training program is also stressing me out so hard where every single side is going to failure, I feel utterly destroyed in my brain, not in my body, but in my brain. That's where um, I am going away from like uh, Greg's method of training, training to failure, training to failure, training to failure, going going harder than last time all the time and doing it smarter, which is like, I'm still going to go to failure, but only my last set is going to be going to failure. And my all my other sets, like I have four or five sets of every single thing. Like I did four, uh, today's workout was three sets of a certain kind of press or leg press or something, three sets of another kind of leg press or something, uh, four to five sets of hamstring curls of one sort and then another one and another one. Every single one of the initial ones that I do until the last set is basically one to two reps shy of failure, mostly one rep shy of failure, so reps in reserve of one, which is very easy for me to do. I, like I, that doesn't feel taxing for me at all. And then the last one, I basically end up taking that one as a drop set. So I take it to failure and then do drop set beyond failure. So I did that today and I did that yesterday with something. I did that yesterday with arms and calves and I did this one today again with legs. And if it feels good with legs, then trust me, it's going to feel good with everything else. And it felt so good that even while I was in the gym training my legs, I was looking forward to coming back and I was looking forward to the next day training back. <laughs> It feels really silly and it feels so meathead to kind of say that, but I just feel so recovered that as much as I'm really enjoying even this current session right now, I'm looking forward to coming into the gym 24 hours from now to, to enjoy the next session by coming in. So I understand how meathead that sounds, but that's how good recovery actually feels. And you're still not leaving gains on the table because you're still getting to failure. If I have six exercises, I still have six drop sets to failure anyways. So you're not missing out on, on anything. Plus, I still have the exact same amount of volume too. So if I, if I had 24 sets or 20 to 24 sets of legs doing uh, going before, I only now have six sets of failure as opposed to 20 to 24 sets of failure. So you can understand the massive difference. And I feel this massive difference immediately after coming off, uh, back from deload and then just optimizing my training programming the way that it needs to be optimized. So I really wanted to mention this deload thing because again, I spoke to another uh, client of mine right now who, because he started off in a deload, is feeling, man, I lost all my palms. It feels like I don't even lift anymore and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, just, just shut up and just stick to the program. Um, okay. So that's deloading done. <clears throat> One of the things that I noticed today was uh, that my left, this is something that I've always had. Night, like this is something I've had all the way from 2012, 2013, I don't know, 2011, I don't know. I've had this always, which is my left leg has always been an inch or two in up to 2.5 inches at certain points in time, smaller than my right leg. The circumference of my left uh, leg has been 
two and a half inches smaller than the circumference of my uh, right leg from time to time and otherwise at least an inch to an inch and a half so i can see that really clearly even right now when i look at the pictures and everything where my left leg or and specifically my outer quad sweep is smaller than my right leg i also tested my hamstring strength um and my hamstring strength is the same on both left and right that means my hamstrings as far as i can tell are not imbalanced so that means it's my quads that are imbalanced one of the other ways that i figured out that my quads are imbalanced is because literally today when i was doing the leg press when i was doing my very first exercise of leg press my right leg is feeling so my, my leg presses are isolateral leg presses which means they can both individually go i mean i you obviously push them together but they can both individually go kind of like a you know like a bench a dumbbell bench um so it's not like one leg is doing the job of the other and therefore this one is feeling more I still felt nothing on my le left leg doing the exact same amount of reps and, and sets and everything, but I felt everything on my right leg and I, I couldn't figure out why. So my goal at this point in time, and, and it's also the right leg that's bigger than the left leg. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, it seems like the strength is the same. It seems, right? I, I don't know, because like I was pushing the exact same amount of reps and I still failed. But every time I felt sore, I felt sore only in my right leg and never the left one. So my goal at this point is anything that I'm doing for my quads, quads only, not hamstrings, because I did test my hamstrings and they're fine. Anything that I'm doing for my quads, I'm going to do one extra set on my left leg and I'm going to do that. That set is going to be the drop set to failure one. I am not going to do a drop set to failure on my leg presses in general, my squats in general. So both of them are not going to go drop set to failure. It's my left leg that is going to go to drop set to failure. And that's what I'm going to do for the next four weeks or so, which is going to be maybe eight training sessions almost close to six to eight training sessions of legs so let's see how that looks and feels like uh, because as, as you can see i'm making gains almost on a daily basis and i'm going to keep on increasing my food i'm going to increase my food like by a substantial amount like i don't really fear fat gains uh, that much i really want to put on some more size size like and i want to put on some more weight weight so i'm going to keep calories consistent and try and keep them um you know try and keep them three to three thirty to fifty or thirty five hundred or something as opposed to one day doing four thousand and then the next day doing two thousand and then so on and so forth but yes, I'm going to try and put on some more mass um, and uh, just add on the drop sets to failure on the left the left leg. So that's my training programming uh, update. Pretty much, that's pretty much it. Besides that, some of the uh, the new things that I've added in, like the the flies, uh, I re-added the most optimal method of doing flies, which I've already made a video about, and that's being edited and it's going to come out pretty soon. So my pecs should start seeing way more gains as well coming in the next four to six weeks. In terms of arms, I forgot if I did something. I did so during the deload week. I started doing everything mind muscle connection, um, like it just retrained my mind muscle connection. And I've already made a full series on the mind muscle connection. The videos are ed uh, they're edited. The thumbnails are out. Um, I'm just waiting on thumbnails basically to be done. And one of these videos should be out by tomorrow. So, yeah, you, you already have all of this stuff coming out. Um, but yeah, so I basically restarted doing my mind muscle connection on my on every single piece of my body at this point while I was doing the deload week. So I used the deload week to just train the mind muscle connection far away from failure. But again, the mind muscle connection. That's the whole point of that. Besides that, yes, calves are also going into mind muscle connection at this point. Like I'm going to forget doing the weights and just do mind muscle connection for calves only and just keep just keep doing that and see how that goes. Um, everything else is good. Everything else is supposed to be high intensity and drop sets to failure, not necessarily mind muscle connection for everything else. So that's the way that programming has been set for, for now. I just wanted to give you all that update. Um, that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else right now. Hopefully all of you guys and girls are having a good weekend. Yesterday was uh, Halloween. I was of course working through it. <laughs> I hope at least all of you did enjoy uh, Halloween and spend time with your family and friends and everything. Uh, again, anyways, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying life and I hope you are too. And I shall see you all the next time. Peace. And finally, if I can help you to create a training program in order for you to gain muscle and not fat, if I can help you to create a diet where you can optimize fat loss and not muscle loss, if I can help you to understand how essential a reverse diet is and set it up for you, or if you're using any SARMs or steroids or any PEDs and you need help with guidance and safety around those, or if you just need to understand what your blood tests actually mean, or if you're trying to navigate life and you want to understand your psychology and other psychology and how can you be more productive and happier in your own life, please feel free to reach out to me. My Instagram and my email are both in the description box below as well as on the video in front of you right now. And finally, if you can help me out, if you know other people that need my help and advice and guidance, but they don't even know that I exist, just let them know about my existence. Finally, if you haven't already, then please help me out with the like, comment, share, subscribe, and I shall see you all next time. Peace.